We can speak now live to Mohamed Morandi, an analyst and a professor at the University of Tehran. Thank you very much for being with us here on France 24. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, what's your reaction when you see these images of tens of thousands of Iranians turning out to back the government? Well, I think they were far larger than tens of thousands. And your um, report, which said that it's not known if it's spontaneous or not, is implying that somehow people did not go on their own will. And I think that is a bit unfair to the Iranian people. Uh, we have to make a distinction here. The peaceful protests that took place not just a week ago, but over the past few months, have been directed at problems with the economy, uh, financial institutions that have collapsed and people have lost their money. They wanted the government to make up and compensate for it. And no one is criticizing that. And the, the rallies today that were against the riots were not at all directed towards those protests. But the riots that happened in the su subsequent days were very violent. And uh, social media apps were used. People from your country, Paris, the Mujahideen Akhal terrorist organization, which is based in Paris, was involved in citing violence. The Mujahideen Akhal is a terrorist organization that in the 1980s assassinated hundreds of people in Tehran blew up many bombs and killed many people here, and then fought for Saddam Hussein in the Iran-Iraq war. They are our Al-Qaeda, but based in Paris. So they were inciting people to violence. Social media apps were being used by people in Europe and North America to teach people to use uh, Molotov cocktails. So if you compare that to 2009 in the London riots, where five or six people died, the British prime minister wanted to shut down social media then and he ordered uh, the social media to cooperate with the government to arrest those who carried out the riots. So when it's London, it's riots, but when it's Tehran or Iran, it is protesters. But Mr. Mirandi, just to bring it back to Iran, is it not, though, understandable that so many pockets of anti-government protests have broken out with unemployment among the young so high, prices rising, and the economy across uh, Iran in a very poor state? Well, the economy is facing difficulties, obviously, partially because of mismanagement that exists in your country as well, corruption, which exists in your country as well, the drought, thanks to global warming. But, uh, but also, uh, it is because the United States has been violating the terms of the nuclear agreement. And so, so, Mr. Morandi, think... Mr. Morandi, Iranian officials have, have no part, there's no blame at all from, from the Iranian officials. Unemployment is not um, the Iranian government's concern. I think I said, I think that I said mismanagement and I said uh, corruption as well. I think I mentioned those two first. I think, uh, I mean, you are state TV and I think that as a, a state television, you have to listen to what I say and reflect my views correctly. I said it's a combination of things, but obviously the U.S. role in this is quite clear. And uh, in addition to that, I have to point out that uh, over the past uh, few days, uh, Persian, uh, the, the Persian language BBC, as well as the VOA, which are state-owned, they have been trying to fuel the flames in Iran. So instead of reflecting the news, they've been trying to propagate unrest in the country. This is interference in the internal affairs of Iran. And if when, the, when your country and your government or the United States accuses Russia without actually providing evidence, that is legitimate. But you, your governments allow terrorists in, in France to use social media application to incite violence, and then uh, you do nothing about it. And when the Iranian government tries to stop these applications, you condemn Iran. Yet the British government does that, or did that in 2009. And now we know that after the U.S. elections, the United States is placing more control on Facebook and on Twitter. So I don't, I, this is, I think, double standards. And if uh, Iran is a country which has elections, we have an elected president, and we are leaders elected by a council that's itself elected, we have local and uh, parliamentary elections in Saudi Arabia, which your government sells weapons to, to murder the people of Yemen, to create starvation in Yemen, uh, they don't have elections. But, but Mr. Morandi, just very briefly to bring it back to Iran, are authorities in uh, Tehran in any way willing to address the concerns and turn the fortunes around of these ordinary Iranians that have taken to streets uh, against the regime? It's not a regime, it's a government, it's a state. We don't call the French a regime. 
Uh, our president was elected in an election that had a turnout of 73 percent. All of our presidential elections have high turnouts, and that's because people consider our uh, elections to be important and meaningful. And of course, the, uh, the President Rouhani is trying to improve uh, the state of affairs in Iran. But of course, there are many antagonists. First of all, as I said, the United States government is, in, is pressing Iran by violating the nuclear agreement. And on the other hand, European countries are not being helpful by helping these people who are behind the riots and terrorist organizations to carry on with this sort of behavior. You cannot consider us a rogue state when your governments are helping Saudi Arabia massacre the people of Yemen and your governments are allowing people to incite riots in our country, which has an elected government. Mohammed Morandi from the University of Tehran, thank you very much for being with us.